What's up, PB Cashewville? This is PB, and this is Cashew, and this is Nick, and he was in the Navy, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hit it. What's up, PB Cashewville? It is your boy, PB. And I'm Cashew. And I'm Nick. That's Nick. Nick Maloney, he is our good friend from Rhode Island, and he is like the man. Really good friends with him before, and he used to be in the Navy, and you know what? We said, hey, you know what? It'd be really cool if we have him on the show, so he's on the show today. But first, a couple shout-outs out there. Well, we'd like to give a shout-out to New Heights Baptist Church of Newtown. Guess what? They are starting their first service next week. So if you are in the townships of Newtown, Monroe, Sandy Hook, all those different places, that is the place for you. Check them out at New Height Baptist Church, Newtown. And a shout out again to Pastor Zach Kinsman. Hopefully we can try to see if we can get him back onto the show probably in the next few weeks. Because uh, he was here last time and love to have him again this time around to give us a update on how things are going. So, guys, how are you guys doing? I heard you guys were working on the church today. So, uh, uh, can you guys fill us on some how like secret stuff or anything like that? Or is everything kind of hush-hush right now? Cashew's a beast with uh, with the PA stuff, that's for sure. Uh, I'm telling you. I, this, is, this is what I said about Cashew. Cashew is like the Doctor Strange of editing and such. Like, I'll, the editing that I'll do for this one takes me, like, forever. I give it to Cash, and it's like, it's like Doctor Strange. Like, it's like a ninja. He's like the fruit ninja of editing. So fruit ninja. That's the first that... I ever heard that. <laughs> Dude walked on site. We were me, Brandon. We we're Facetime and Brian, and we're just like we we're watching videos. Can't figure this out. And Matthew's like, oh, you just click this. Boop. Click this. Nope. Testing. Testing. <laughs> there you go, Pete. Sad man. That's why. I, in fact, like again, just letting you know the music that we've been having these past few weeks. All, all cashews. So if he becomes like a DJ and he's like bigger than sliced bread, you you know where you heard him first. It's on the PB Cashew Show. All right. So anything else cool happened this week, fellas? I'm trying to think right now. Mm. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for serving for, you know, because you're in the Navy. So thank you for serving. Yes. Thank you for serving. Thank you for your service. Well, um, I'm leaving now. This is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I appreciate the support, guys. No, it's, no it's, it's, we we're always just... got to be thankful for our veterans. And... Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, whether you served uh, 10 years or uh, 10 days, you know, the fact that you did something that nobody else decided to do, like you decided to pick up the slack, that's uh, that's big. That's huge. So, uh, I guess, Nick, uh, quick question. What made you go into the Navy? Um, I was slated like everybody else from the youth group to go to the latest and greatest HAC to get that pastoral theology degree. Um, but I don't know. I just felt, I felt like that wasn't where I was supposed to be right now mm -hmm. or at the time. Um, and I was in between, you know, do I want to just go to regular college? Do I want to just work? Do I want to, what do I want to do? And my recruiter and a buddy that graduated before me last year, he was in, he he just had gotten back from a school mm -hmm. They went and did a school visit and I was talking with him. Um, ironically enough, he's over recruiting in uh, New York right now. Um, but they were just like telling me, you know, their stories. My buddy was telling me about, you know, all the things he's done already, where he's going to be going. Right. And I was like, you know what? That doesn't sound like too bad of an idea. Talked a little bit about, you know, what I wanted to do uh, with the recruiter, took the test, got some pretty technical jobs that I liked. So, you know, as, as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, naval history. That's uh, really good. Do you actually root for Navy during the Army-Navy games, or you really don't care? Absolutely root for Navy. There we go. I, that, that's where you and I differ, because it's go Army all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's, it's always, it's all Navy or nothing. I gotta admit that they have a, they're a really good football team. Not not gonna lie. Uh, I don't even I don't they, even they watch. They were pretty decent a few years ago. I don't even watch. It's just everything is everything is rivalry for me. So yeah. <laughs> so if it's, if it's not Navy, it's nothing. Gotcha. So we understand that you were developed in a submarine. Uh, was this a nuclear missile sub, or would you, or in a attack sub? So, 
the only the only kind of subs that the navy their u.s navy has are nuclear so everything is nuclear powered um the difference between which kinds you have three three different classes you have the sea wolf class the uh, four different classes the sea wolf class the los angeles class the virginia class and the um ohio class and the ohio class is broken up into ballistic missile submarines that are the nuclear deterrent force and they're broken up uh to that and the guided missiles so the guided missiles are just kind of decon not deconstructed but they just removed the ballistic missiles and put the non uh, non nuclear non nuclear weapons yeah, in there on that um but i got i got the chance to ride los angeles virginia and um a guided cruise missile so the gn that's cool because yeah. I, I thought that when i was writing my notes down i thought that i'm just going to throw this question out here but i didn't know if it was going to be one of those questions where uh i can't say that or else i'd have to kill you no <laughs> no that's no i mean it's it's public information like you can google like i could tell you the boats i've been on and you can google them and they're nuclear they they have like the basic specifications okay it's yeah it's no real secret that we have nuclear i mean it, every every country's trying to be full nuclear power nice okay cool uh in terms of like i forgot to ask this also but uh, you could have had also your choices of other um, other branches of the military. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose the Navy specifically? Why didn't you go to, like, the Army? They were the ones that showed up. <laughs> the ones that showed up. It, it, they teach you this in recruiting school, cause, um, but it's literally nine times, out of the ten, nine times out of ten an applicant that's branch shopping is going to join the branch that they first talked to. So I see, they, I see. The, the adage is first to contact, first to contract. Hmm. Nice. And so I kind of didn't even consider Air Force, Army, Marines, just just Navy. Mm, very nice. You can't ask this question because I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just, it's unfortunate, but sometimes there's moments where Matt doesn't know how to read. So yeah, <laughs> we're we're working on that. Uh, I'm I'm trying to use all of my English skills to be able to to teach him. Well, the P, the read. PA booth is just buttons. Yeah, yeah. buttons and lights. It's very easy. <laughs> it's like a. I mean, you just have channel, but I already know what that means. So yeah. like, okay. I think we've gone through the letters A through C so far. So next week it's going to be E, F, and G. So we'll, we're we're getting there. Where's D? <laughs> You said A through C. You forgot B. That's why I only got like a B minus in English, which is crazy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we understand also that you, when um, when you're deployed in like a submarine, that it's I don't, we already know it's like cramped. The conditions are pretty tough, so I can't say like how was life in a submarine? Be like, oh, it was like really tough. But let me. The one question I want to ask is, what was probably one of the cooler things in a sub that you found much cooler than living on land so honestly so i guess it's like a two-part question because subs aren't that cramped like even for a guy my size like i'm six one on a good day um it's not that cramped like you got your you got your triple rack uh or your triple bunks you got one two three um and it's not like it's not that bad like it's you got room to sleep you're not really bumping your head. The only time I like actually like legitimately hit my head super hard was actually on the biggest one. The the Ohio class is the biggest one because it has the missile compartment and it's 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 insanely big. And that was the only one that I like slammed my head into something. Um, but no, I mean, it's I may just be biased because I've been on subs for like three years, but uh, subs are comfy. Like I I think I it's just... comfy for me. Yeah, because I I don't know if uh, you've watched the movie Das Boot. I haven't but, seen Das Boot. Yeah, it's uh, this German movie of uh, guys in a um, undersea boat, a U-boat, mm -hmm. and it's like so cramped, and we do. Oh, we hear, yeah. We hear all of the different stories about it, but that's really interesting that it's um, the old ones. The the older you get, generally, generally the smaller it is. Um, but yeah, now like the more modern the boat. So like my second trip, I was on a Virginia class, and it was like, it was like uh, the Ritz compared to like to the... Motel Six, <laughs> going from like a Virginia to a Los Angeles. Because like if you get on the right Los Angeles class, like you're riding a boat that's been in commission for like since the 70s. So, so the, the older, the worse it is. The, newer. the older, yeah, the older, the the less um, comfortable it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's still it's still comfy, but. I think the best thing, the best thing on a sub that you can't 
like you can get it in like in the normal world but it's just not the same it's just the camaraderie right because it's like it's you and a bunch of other dudes and now a bunch of other dudes and chicks like you're just in it together like yeah you're just in the suck together like you're on deployment together something happens to the boat it happens to everybody Mm -hmm. we get extended everybody gets extended so it's just like you take especially for like my for my team like we were never permanent party like we would come on for our missions and then we would leave so like once we got into our rhythm like a couple days in you know like you find your group that you're playing cards with on cruise mess that you're eating with you're hanging out with qualifying with together it's 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 just straight up camaraderie like brotherhood that sounds good that's awesome yeah it's crazy like there was this one time my last deployment um oh, i can't remember the song but it was it was a song where like you have to go like super high pitch um at like in like the bridge or whatever and one of our senior chiefs from the engine room comes in and he's like you listen to the song he's like i got 20 bucks to whoever could hit this note and like three seconds later all here is a bunch of dudes <laughs> like trying to hit it it was hilarious but it's just times like that like it's just straight up camaraderie where we're you know we had gotten extended twice now mm-hmm. doing like a mission where we were just like constantly like on watch but like it was those small moments where like yeah this sucks but like we're all in this together you know it's I, it's funny like the branch that i work with work at is a uh, stop it's a stop and shop bank branch and so it's just this the vault is here, the teller line is here, and then the office is here, but it's all cramped. Mm-hmm. So we were just like, you know, this feels like uh, being in a in a submarine because <laughs> you're always in tight quarters. And when you're having lunch, like people are trying to balance stuff while you're having lunch. And then it's people going back and forth and everything. I was like, I wonder if this is how Nick feels like. Oh, that's, in, that was, that's in the like you said that, I was like, oh, that's comfy. <laughs> that's comfy. Um, okay, uh... Alright, this I got this. I can you, read this. You, you can read this time? I could. This Miracle. I can read it. Miracle. So, in regards to your faith, how does one stay faithful or spiritual in the military or Navy? Um, so, it, it really... We're in a culture now where, yeah, like, there's negative... There's negatives to, you know, the kind of culture we live in where you have to accept, like, what somebody says or mm-hmm. you're kind of demonized for not, like, with the transgender stuff, with mm-hmm. yeah. all that kind of stuff. Like, I when that especially race stuff when that kind of stuff comes up political like i kind of just sit back Mm -hmm. listen yeah i don't i don't talk until i get a gauge of the conversation and know what i'm walking into Mm -hmm. because i mean it's that's just kind of how everything is with the military because yeah we're accepting and um we're accepting and we want people to be open open about everything so with that, in my opinion, comes, you know, easing off the easing off the gas pedal on some of on vocalizing your opinions. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. my my chief, for instance, my current chief right now, he's like all for he's like all for what I'm doing. Pretty much my whole chain of command knows that I'm getting out of the Navy. I'm moving back to the area to help start the church. Right. So there there's no like judgment about it. But I think it's just a matter of how spiritual can you get? Like, obviously, mm-hmm. obviously there's, there's times where I wasn't the most spiritual person. Um, there's, but there's also times where I've been in my Bible, like every day, been talking about the Bible every day. Like it's, you'd be surprised. Like once you, once you get into your rhythm with like your personal walk and you're confident with yourself and your beliefs mm-hmm. and you kind of take a list and get a gauge as to the workspace that you're in Mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how openly you could talk about you know christianity right and religion well that's good that's uh reassuring to have did you ever have any uh relationships like do you have were there chaplains that that you were able to uh... oh yeah they're they're the navy has like it's it's a um it's like a job in the navy like Mm -hmm. they have officers that are specifically chaplains um and so like they're there they're there for anything like i had a chaplain at my command in georgia he was like he, he, he was kind of like unorthodox like I, he, he spent some time with the marines so he was really unorthodox okay but he was like you know i always i suggest to anybody that's coming to me that's stressed i, I told him to pick up smoking i'm like what <laughs> two i'm like i'm doing two and two sir <laughs> where are we getting four here chaps and he's like i didn't say you had to smoke the thing but because <laughs> he, he he walked it out step by step he's like listen if you the navy gives you more breaks 
the Navy gives more breaks for smokers than they do for non-smokers. Like, if, if I'm a non-smoker and I'm like, hey, chief, I'm going to go step outside for five minutes and just do nothing. they would be like, no, good at work. Right. But I'd be like, hey, chief, I'm going to go take a smoke break. They're like, okay. So he's like, take your pack of cigarettes, get yourself a nice, cool little lighter, light up the cigarette, and put it right next to you. Take a smoke break. I mean, they're 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 very unorthodox, but we're they're dealing with an unorthodox people. Gotcha. Yeah. But is. but yeah, the, we got chaplains, and it, it really it's all denominations. Uh, like I just uh, I just screened a chaplain that is a rabbi, ordained rabbi. I had another one that was a priest, and mm-hmm. of course, like I'm doing my my screening question. I'm like, so are you single or married? I'm like, your father, right? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, so you're probably not married. Like, <laughs> no. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. That's 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 uh, fascinating to hear. Um, okay, this one may be another one of those confidential ones. Okay, so so did you ever uh, wrestle with the thought about being in combat? Like, was there ever like a situation where you actually, oh my goodness, we're on battle stations and we're about to go head to head with another sub or a ship? Uh, did you ever get into a situation like that or? Is, it, um, is this one of those like I I could tell you but then have to kill you situations? <laughs> the uh, let, we'll put it this way: the only person that knows, outside of like obviously the people that I worked with, like the only person that is in my family that knows anything that like the exact details of what I did is my dad, uh-huh. and that was the night before like we pulled the plug. Right. Um. So specific details, like I can't, I can't, like my wife doesn't even know, like right, right. what I've done, which sucks. It's confidential, so it's, yeah. So but, it, it's but one no, of those, there, there. Yeah. I've been on, I've been on missions where we've been in, like in, in waters, and we've witnessed, like my, my trip has witnessed the successful launch of a certain missile on a certain test platform. Wow. Um. I've been on a deployment where we were or i i was the first person to correlate a certain radar to a certain ship's first operational deployment oh that's cool it wow. was it's really cool did yeah. two radars uh did some fingerprinting so like i think the write-up that they they gave us for the like uh information memorandum that we could say like hey this is what we did um i think like i updated the emitter database by like 250 percent with that one thing um, so like we do, we do cool stuff. Like we do really cool stuff. Um, I almost got extended. Um, we missed, we missed, um, I'm not going to say the name, but we missed, I was on the boat and we were two weeks away. Like we got off and then two weeks later they launched missiles. Wow. They were, they launched oh, missiles into, into theater. <laughs> so like you could, you could look it up. Like I, I can't confirm it, but you could look up who it was. But wow, that was, it was, I was like, they were like, oh, uh, you know, they got the whole team together because it's a bunch of like CT riders and they're like, they, they don't do deployments and I'm, they're like, you know, so just keep your heads up. We might get extended. And I'm like, okay, why? Like, well, we might launch some missiles. I'm like, am I missing the part where we should be <laughs> sad? Like, this is sick. I've only been on for, I've only been on a boat for like water slugs where they're testing the torpedoes. Okay. But that, but like, oh actual like missile, missile launch, launches yeah i've never been on but it, i was so i was like ready to be extended that was the only time i was ever been ready to be extended another question i forgot to ask, forgot to write this one uh what's cool about the navy is that you get to go into different ports of call mm-hmm. coolest port of call that you got to do short leave at i got a couple top top three top three um I'm gonna say number three has to be my first ever, uh, Gla- not, yeah, Glasgow, the United S- Kingdom, Scotland, nice. Yep. Nice. Um, I had like my first like legally purchased. I don't condone it. Uh, first legally purchased pint of beer there. Um, uh, but it was it was like your, it's like your first thing, like the the first thing you ever do. It's like, yeah, it's gotta be top three. Like we went and we went on the Loch Ness tour. Oh, nice. Toured some of like the ancient stuff. Like there's even this um, statue over there of like a person riding a horse. They put the 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 citizens there put a cone on the head of the horse <laughs> and the, the person. And there was like some time where like the cops would remove it, be right back, and they'd like they'd be like legitimate fights about it. So like every time we passed it, there'd always be a cone on it. It oh, was that's so hilarious. Fun. So that's number three. Number two. 
Number two would have to be Tromso. Who went to Tromso, Norway. It's, wow. Yeah, it's some, some small Norwegian place up in the tip of nowhere. Um, but I got to climb them uh, to the top of their uh, their mountain. I was gonna say ice mountain. Top of their mountain, we got, I got to see the Northern Lights in person. That's so neat. Oh wow! And I got to eat reindeer steak. Is reindeer steak good? It's good. If you like yeah. your steaks like rare, medium rare at, at most, like it was good. But it was really good. I like that. And then number one was Sudabe. Sudabe. Greece. Oh wow! Right in, right in the Mediterranean Sea. Wow! wow so like wow. if you if you look up if you look it up on a map, I think it's like called Chania, Chania or Hania or something. Mm-hmm. But Suda Bay is right there. It was so great. Had my first gyro over in Suda Bay. Um, another one of those. I don't condone stories, but like we got we got like obliterated there. There's like this place called American Alley, and it was just like every time you went there, they're like trying to lure you in, so they just give you like free like sugar shots and like so like everybody was messed up but um it was like it was you, you hear those stories from like those crusty vetches like yeah we we pulled into port and we were we were stone-faced walking around the place like that was that was my like crusty navy vet story like we had it was me my supervisor and the the senior operator so i was the basic operator and the senior operator he was like blacked out like way past uh, go do not collect 200 we brought him and me and my supervisor like we were we were like close uh-huh. so we walked from the bar we were at we brought him to the hotel we were at the hotel's elevator is probably no bigger than like no wider than the desk oh my goodness for some reason it's no wider than the desk and so we're we're bringing him up to the room he i think he left his key in the room before we even left so now i got to go back down there <laughs> and then get the key so we go back up and we let him in and then we go back down and you know we're just like wandering the place trying to link back up with our group and we finally like we couldn't do it so we just decided to go back but i was like the amount of like bad stuff that could have happened because we were we were like we had no sense of direction Mm -hmm. just completely obliterated like walking around again i don't condone it but then funny funny story after the day after we were all like hungover like messed up headaches like we had to go to the boat to put our luggage in there and our like suitcases and one of the guys he was blacked out passed out in the hallway in front of his door the next morning the front desk was apologizing to him oh (laughs) they were apologizing to him it was it was crazy i don't know how that worked out but but yeah that's that's Greek hospitality for you, I but guess. But yeah, the, the the place was beautiful. We toured the place. It was great waters, great like great scenery. It was it I I would if you gave me a ticket to Suda Bay, I'd go in a heartbeat. Very nice. You didn't get were you just in Atlantic waters or did you ever get a chance to be deployed like in the Pacific at all? Um, no no Pacific. That that's the that's a different um that's a different area. Um, yeah. but I did, I, I mean, I, I went to Djibouti. I wasn't too much to report on there. Yeah. Okay. It's Djibouti. It's Djibouti. Africa. Because I, because when you said Su, Suba Bay, I thought you said Subic Bay, which is the base uh, of the Philippines. I was yeah, like, no. why did you go there? No. <laughs> cause, uh, that, that's amazing. So, um, in, in terms of like the Navy then, so you would just like, if you had to go back, you know, a few years back and you had the choice to do it all over again, would you do it again? Oh Yeah. I I always toss and toss the question around like oh like, cause you know you get to you get to your point in your life where it's like, like where I'm at right now, like I I struggled with trying to like make the decision do I want to do I want to be part of this launch team do I want to help New Heights and it's like, I'm working on my relationship with God it was kind of mm-hmm. like, I kind of left it where it was when I joined the Navy picked it up in bits and pieces like you know picked it up dropped it picked it up dropped it not like. I don't believe anymore, but it's just like, you know, you, you go off and do your own thing. Um, so it, it was a tough decision because it's like, man, I just wish I went to Hiles Anderson. Mm -hmm. I would like, I wish, I wish, I wish, but I'm, I'm, my opinion and belief on it is your journey is your journey for the reason that God has it. That's right. Amen. I like that. So if I like, if I snap my finger, get my wish, I went to Hiles Anderson instead I don't have the maturity that I have now. I don't have the right. experiences that I have now, the discipline that I have now. Mm-hmm. I don't have the wife that I have now, the kid mm-hmm. that I have now, because I guarantee you me and Megan wouldn't have, we, w- we wouldn't have uh, linked back up. 
to you know start dating and mm-hmm. then eventually get married but i think it's just your journey is the journey that it is you know zach's journey is his journey your journey is your journey mm-hmm. matt's journey is his journey right right um and my journey is my journey my job obviously right now is to recruit but i don't follow the same I don't follow the same belief system that the career recruiters, like the brainwashed people do, where yeah. it's like every person they talk to, you need to join the Navy. Mm-hmm. Um, I I took it more as if I talk to the right person, they're like, and this is their path, like this is their path, they're going to mm-hmm. join. Right. Like I can't convince some 17-year-old to sit in my office and join the Navy. That's just not possible. Right. Um, but no, I don't. If, if you sent me back in five, six years, 2015, I graduated high school, I'd do it all over again. With the knowledge that I have now, mm-hmm. I'd do it all over again. I don't know if I'd have taken you to the Rangers game, though. <laughs> 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 no, I yeah. probably still would. Yeah, it was cool. Nick got the coolest graduation gift out of everybody. Like, this is your happy birthday. Uh, good good graduation and uh, good luck, with good luck in the Navy. <laughs> and we went to Rangers versus Hurricanes. Is the best experience ever. I think they went to shootout, no? No, no we, they didn't. We killed them. That was... That, Five nothing. We went to... Rangers went to shootout against the Capitals when Megan took me for my uh, for Christmas. I and see. I was like, that's the perfect first game. Yeah. And we want to winning too. Like, hockey is one of the things that I wish we could talk about more in this podcast, but nobody else wants to talk about it. You never ask. You, yes, you I did. Assume. You just <laughs> yes, assume. Yes, I did. No, no. You just assume. I, no, no, you wait assume. a minute. And I even said, okay, okay. wait a minute, wait a minute. Sports. Wait a minute. I said, I said on. He's been quiet for too long. He's like, you never asked. The, you assume. But we were discussing like pre-planning this, this, this thing because I know Nick and I are like, he, are the, this is the one of the things that I'm glad that Nick's coming back here around this area because I'll have yet another person to talk hockey with because everybody here just talks about baseball and basketball. <laughs> Nobody talks hockey. Like, Rangers are doing awesome right now. And I have no one except Justin. Shout out to you, Justin, to share it with. So I'm glad that Nick is back. <laughs> we need to plan another Rangers game uh, to go once they lift all of the funky mandates and everything. Oh, um, wait, you know they're taking that out, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I heard. Kyrie yeah. Irving gets to go back to the Nets. See, I always I'll thought... Just you know, basketball. They just, just basketball. Just, and and, and Aaron right Judge, <laughs> Judge and them can play too for the Yankees. No, I, since we're on the subject of Irving real quick, I always thought it was funny that as of recently he couldn't play because he was unvaccinated, but he can attend. Yeah, I know. It made no sense. It made no sense. Or here, here was another funny thing. It's like if you're a visiting team, like a away team, you're facing that team, the same team, like the home mm-hmm. team, and the player's unvaccinated, the away team players can play. Right, right. That made no sense. The one thing that you can't, though, is uh, if you're unvaccinated, if you're playing in Toronto – or Montreal, or any Canadian mm-hmm. uh, venue, you can't play, yeah. which is which is bananas. No, I think everything's, like, calming down, though. Like, Rhode Island, like, very, they were very, like, yeah. on board with, like, papers, like, carry your papers everywhere. All of a sudden, it, it was literally like they flipped the switch, like, all of a sudden, you don't have to wear your mask, we don't care. Like, even the college, because I'm doing a trig class at CC, the community college over there, and the first time we were back in person... They didn't care that I wasn't eligible for a booster because I had to get I had to get the two shots for work. Right. Like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um. And they were like, we don't care that you're not eligible for a booster. You have to. You're gonna be treated like you're unvaccinated. I'm like, technically, I'm fully vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And then like a bunch of people complained, and then they all of a sudden like a week after they're like, we just lifted it, and then like a week after that, you don't have to wear a mask at college anymore. Like. You still have to get tested, but not if you're ineligible for a booster or if you already right. have your booster. It's like, you guys don't know what's going on. You're yeah. just following, like, whatever. Uh, back to, wait, before, yeah. back to the hockey, you don't ask. We had this discussion, and no, you mentioned no, some no, hockey I, players. I was saying, yeah, I heard of them before. Yeah, but they, that's it. And like, I even told like, you, if you the, talk the, about the hockey, extent, the extent I'll of probably ho- be just listening. The extent of it will, won't be, like, a discussion. It's just going to be like, uh-huh. Yeah, word. Oh snap! Slap shots, word, <laughs> dude. Yeah, glove save. Yeah, wrist shots. <laughs> Mario Lemieux doesn't play anymore. Yeah, Sidney Crosby, yo, he's the man. Wait, and we did talk. Seven. We <laughs> did talk about hockey. You mentioned fighting for in in the in the third. This is the thirty first episode. In in all of the episodes, that was like the most that we talked about hockey in. In forever. Fine, so, you know, we'll talk about hockey one of these days and just 
and we'll have Nick on in that day <laughs> as well. Wow, excellent. So again, uh, any parting thoughts, guys? Any last last minute thoughts? Just we'll talk about hockey whenever we have yes! a chance. Yes. So you can stop complaining Fred about it. Wins. I mean, Fred wins. Cashew wins. No, you mean Peavy Peavy wins. <laughs> hey, Always we, forgetting his name. We haven't had one of those in a really long time. I've been very good at knowing who I am in the past few days, except that particular instance. So I'm glad. Well, Nick, I'm so glad that we'll be seeing more of you again. And actually, Nick is one of our sponsors because one of our mics, he donated. And he also gave us a lot of really good uh, advice about how to do it. Uh, his wife, Megan, is probably going to do some of the art for us. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool. So I'm glad that you're around. And... Uh, Hope you'll see you again in the show. Absolutely. It was great having or great being here. Awesome. Great. All right. So from all of us at PB and Cashew, I'm we ah, see, I almost forgot it. Almost forgot it. We don't know you, but we love you, and there's a God above that does. I'm PB. And I'm Cashew. And I'm Nick. Peace, Peace out, PB Cashew Vale. <laughs>